Okay, last answer key for this week, the selection process, the types of natural selection um, handout. So there are three types of natural selection. There is directional, and it's called directional because it moves in one direction or the other. You may have noticed that the traits that we're looking at, there's always a range. So there's light and dark, or small to large. And so the directional selection, the population shifts into either one direction or the other. So one extreme or the other. In a normal population, you'll see this, um, this is called a histogram. It shows the frequency of different traits, this bell curve, where the majority of the species, the majority of the um, organisms in that population will have the, the middle or the intermediate form. And then less individuals will have the extreme forms on the left and on the right. So directional selection causes a shift in a population's phenotype. So whatever variation we're looking at to either go to the left or to the right. So one extreme or the other. So an extreme phenotype that was once rare is now more common. And the mean value or the average value of the trait shifts in the direction of the more advantageous phenotype. Stabilizing selection, the intermediate or the middle phenotype is favored. So the, the phenotype variation that's right in the middle of the graph, that one becomes more common. So this, um, two other little notes here, decreases genetic diversity because the middle, the intermediate form is favored because that intermediate form um, makes the population more fit. And then also the extreme phenotypes may be lost. We'll look at an example of that one here in a second. Then the last, the third type is disruptive selection. This is the opposite of stabilizing. So in this one, both extremes are favored and the intermediate form is selected against. So this population shifts to both extremes on the left and on the right of the, um, the histogram. So this can also lead to a formation of a new species, which is called speciation. We'll learn more about that next unit. Okay, so you should have watched this YouTube video linked here. Um, this first scenario, which was done for you, but I still would like to talk through it. So there's a population of rabbits, and um, they have two incompletely dominant traits. So the black fur, which is capital B, and lowercase b, which is white fur. So they're either black or white. But there's an intermediate form, which is gray. So if they're heterozygous, meaning they have one of each of the alleles, capital and lower, dominant and recessive, they have gray fur. All right, so, um, so what happened to this population? So what type of selection would occur if this population migrated to an area that had very dark colored and white colored stones? So it used to be that the gray fur was the more common um, fur color in this population shown by this gold bar here, this middle bar. But then with the, they were forced to migrate to a new environment where there were white rocks and black rocks. We can assume that the white colored genotype, excuse me, phenotype, and the black colored phenotype would then become more common. So instead of having this nice bell-shaped curve, the two extremes are now going to become more common. So this example right here, this is disruptive solution, uh, selection, excuse me, because both extremes are favored in the intermediate form, which in this case is gray fur, is selected against. All right, so here's the explanation for that one. Um, and then the next scenario, which you were asked to do by yourself. So in humans, birth weight can be represented by a typical bell curve. So this, this gold um, line here. Babies of low weight lose heat more quickly because of surface area to volume ratio and get ill from the infectious disease more easily, whereas babies of larger weight are more difficult to deliver through the pelvis, which could cause the mother and the baby to both lose their lives. So which type of selection would most likely occur here? So in this example, the normal birth rate weight, this middle intermediate form is the more advantageous trait. So over time, this normal birth weight is going to become more common. So this gold bar here, this is the um, population before. And then the population after, we're going to see a, a peak, a spike in the normal birth rates because, again, this is the one that's more advantageous. So the ideal birth weight is the medium birth weight, 
So babies with low birth weight and large birth weight are more likely to have issues and not survive. So the extremes, low and large birth weight, are not going to be as common. The intermediate form is, which is why this is stabilizing selection. And then the last scenario, the peppered moth example, which you guys will look at more um, next week. You're going to have a little um, simulation you're going to do with the peppered moths. This is a really fun example. So the evolution of the peppered moth over the last 200 years has been studied in detail. Originally, the vast major majority of peppered moths had light coloration, which effectively camouflaged them against the light-colored trees and the lichens, which is a symbiotic uh, relationship between algae um, and uh, another protist, upon which they rested. However, due to a widespread um, population during the Industrial Revolution in England, many of the lichens died out, which caused the trees to become darker. And the trees which peppered moss rested on became blackish by ash, causing most of the light-colored moss to die off due to predation. So the birds were more were, could see these moths more easily now if they were light-colored versus if they were dark-colored, because the dark-colored moths were now able to better camouflage against the trees. At the same time, the black colored moss flourished because of their ability to hide in the dark trees. So this is an example of directional selection. So these white colored moths were actually um, more common um, than the peppered moth too, which is like a little bit of each, um, black and white speckled. But since um, the Industrial Revolution caused a lot of um, air pollution, the trees darkened, and now the birds could um, more easily see the light colored moths or the peppered moths. And so we see this shift to this extreme here. The black colored um, moths became more common because they were able to survive longer because they were able to camouflage. So this is an example of directional selection because it's moving to one direction. So let's review that real quick. So directional selection, the population shifts either to one extreme or the other. Stabilizing selection, the intermediate, the middle form becomes more common. The frequency of that trait increases. And then disruptive, both extremes of that trait are favored over time. So again, the disruptive and the stabilizing selection are opposites of one another. And then directional selection, you're either shifting to the left or you're shifting to the right. All right, I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any more questions.